Ah, hello there. Welcome to episode 48 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. You guys have been suggesting Portal 2 for a very long time and I figure we should just give up on not doing Valve games and give you what you want. So, with that said, let's get going. You know, you always gotta love a boundary break episode that just works right off the bat. Here at the very start of the game, we see ourselves going outside of this mock-up room that Shell has to stay inside for I have no idea how much time. But as you can see on the outside here, it says error. Now the funny thing about this little error message is I can't really explain why it's here. You could probably speculate pretty easily, but this error message is in nearly every single map that loads into this game. But anyways, what's really cool about this first area of the game is that we start off in this well-furnished room, go to sleep, and then wake up in a dilapidated version of that room. And as you can see here, those two rooms are completely separate and segmented off by a black wall. And also in this starting area, if you move the camera in just the right way, you can actually see an Axis Helper that the developers of Valve used while making this game. And oh my goodness, there's so much stuff at the start of the game. So only slightly adjacent from the current day room that we were in a second ago is a somewhat similar version only there's one texture that represents the entire room. Although some of the core elements are here, like the bed and the hallway that leads to the door, there are some elements here in this room that are different from the geometry that's in the final game. So now we're going to take a look inside of Wheatley because to no one's surprise, there's actually some gizmos and gadgets inside this little ball-shaped robot. But of course, it's really difficult to get a good look inside of that body. So once we take the camera through, we can actually see how he operates. So one of the coolest things about my show is that I don't pretend to know everything. I like to learn with you, the audience. And sometimes, like Portal 2 itself, learning how the developers use certain tricks can be a puzzle as well. So with that in mind, we're looking at this beginning area here and we can see a backdrop that's clearly 3D. And when we go to move the camera towards that backdrop, the screen turns white. We essentially went into the white void. Now, it took me a good while to figure this out, but there's also an additional room that I thought was just simply not used in the game. I went down there to check it out, and it had a very unusual layout. Now, after looking back and forth between the room and the backdrop, the room and the backdrop, it suddenly dawned on me what this room actually was. And what it turned out to be was that it is the backdrop. And essentially what's going on here for whatever reason, developers did put the backdrop into the map, but the image of the map is projected and blown up to be the background for the player character as they go through the game. Outside of the boundaries for Portal 2 is fairly clean, so finding something out of bounds is a little unusual, which is why showing off this cube here in Test Chamber 4 is worth showcasing, because like I said, unless the game intentionally pushes something out of the boundaries, you'd be very lucky to find anything at all. That's an option. Option A, sit here, do nothing. Option B, go through there, and if she's alive, she'll almost certainly kill us. So now we're in a creepy hallway about to reunite with GLaDOS, and you may notice that this hallway is very mysterious and shady and foggy. Well, if we take ourselves outside of the hallway, you can still see a lot of shade and fog, which doesn't really help us out very much. So let's disable the fog and come to find out that it's just incredibly dark in here. So that still doesn't help us. How about we just make everything in this area completely bright? And oh, <laughs> it looks uh, it looks pretty hideous. I guess, you know what? I guess it's amazing what you can do with proper lighting and effects. All right, now we're looking at the queen bee herself, GLaDOS. And why are we taking a look at GLaDOS today? Well, because, I mean, how are you not gonna have GLaDOS in your Portal 2 video? Duh. But more importantly, if we take the camera inside of her head, you can see that there's a water effect that splashes around inside of her circuitry. Very strange. And as you can see here, it can't be shown by just looking at her from the outside. Just a little quickie right here, I just want to show you this little lava room that GLaDOS drops you into. If you take the camera below the surface, you can actually see that the lava is just a nice clean rectangle. And then the environment itself shapes the lava. So 
So over here at test chamber three and many other chambers, but I just figured I'd use this as an example that you can see for yourself. Some areas of the game allow you to peek through the test chamber walls and see what's really going on behind the scenes. Once again, very mysterious, very ambiguous, and lots of darkness and fog. But if we take ourselves into one of these restricted areas and at the very least turn on the light for every object on the map, we can see the real size of this area as well as the true color of the walls that these objects are hanging off of, which is just a butt ugly yellow. So in all the elevators that lead up to the next test chamber, it's always accompanied by a very elaborate metal frame. And if we take the camera out of reach, we can actually see there's a surge button here, as well as an acronym that gets cut off by a sheet of metal. As you can see here, the floor bed is raised by a whole bunch of garbage. And since this is not a very common floor tile, it's pretty safe to assume that this is essentially a game prop. But what's really interesting is that when we take the camera below this pile of garbage, there's actually a cradle space made up of floor tiles. Another thing I've been holding off on talking about is these mysterious cubes. Now, typically these cubes will show up near every error sign. And what's really interesting about these cubes is that one of them will always warp you to the next map. Essentially, every time you've had to see a loading screen, it's loading the next map of the game. And like I said, one of these cubes will always bring you there. In many, many scenes, Wheatley comes out of nowhere on a little rail and just kind of gives you a little bit of dialogue and he just kind of scoots away into an area of the game that you're not allowed to follow him in. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you every single area that he's gonna be in. That would just, that would just take forever. But showing you this one scene gives you a little bit of an idea of what every single area kind of looks like. Essentially, once the camera bends outside the player's view, every single time, there will be a little wall there for Wheatley to just sit there and rest. Usually he doesn't disappear, sometimes he does, but most of the time he'll just kind of chill out in that one spot. Hey, hey, up here. I found some bird eggs up here. Just dropped them into the door mechanism. Shut it right down. I ah! Bird! 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 Wait a second, birds? Now I'm gonna have to check this out. So if we take the camera through to the scene that I consider the funniest in the whole game, you can actually see that there is a bird waiting to terrorize Wheatley. Now this bird is, again, one of the most primitive birds I've ever seen in my life. It essentially looks like a black paper airplane with no distinct features. But don't worry, viewer, there's actually more than one bird in Portal 2. Just dropped me to the door mechanism. Shut it right down. I ah! Bird! 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 So I've been asked to explain how the portals work in Portal 2, but to answer that, we need to talk about parallel universes. Which we definitely don't have time for on my show, so instead I'm just gonna show you what it looks like when Shell goes out of bounds, but also going through the portals at the same time. As you can see, the various versions of Shell actually do intersect with each other, because in four different instances, Shell is breaking the boundaries. So when four Shells break boundaries together, Shell breaks into herself 12 different times. Portal 2 is just riddled with a lot of fascinating elements. Stuff that didn't even need to be in the game, but they decided to work it in anyways. And one of those things happens to be the assembly line for the drones. At one point, you do see a box spring up from the bottom of the ground so that a drone can be placed inside, and it sinks back down to the ground. Well, you'd be interested to find out that actually, if we take the camera below the ground, we can see that the box is never swapped out. It's just that same one box that goes up and down constantly. But it gives you the illusion that there's multiple boxes involved. Sneaky, sneaky. So this is a pivotal part of the game where Shell breaks a, some boundaries of her own, I suppose, and actually gets out of the tests that GLaDOS sets up for her and tries to escape with Wheatley. Now what's really, really weird here is that there's two separate rooms. One, which is the test chamber itself, and two, which is the test chamber combined with the behind the scenes area of the Aperture facility. Now again, I do not build myself up to make you believe that I know everything that goes on in a video game, so I can't really explain to you why Shell warps from this initial test room over to this other test room that has that elaborate scenario. One would think that you could just keep that room that's connected with the scenario and use the test room there, but that's not the case. At a certain point, you seamlessly transition over from that separate room over to the event room. And of course, I gotta satiate the curiosity of many folks out there. What is on the other side of that test chamber door that GLaDOS wanted you to go through? Well, the answer is just a solid black texture. I even cheated just a little bit to activate the door, open it, and try to go through it. And apparently behind that automatic door is a invisible wall, or a black wall in this case. Here's the 
there's a really funny part of the game where you can choose to go towards a very blatant trap. And if you go towards that trap, you get stuck inside the room and then you're gassed to death. But the bait here is clearly an exit out into the real world. Now in a normal game, you're never given a chance to get that close. Once you step inside the trap room, that door closes, everything locks you in and you're kaputs. However, with Magic Camera, we can see just how much of this quote unquote outdoors there actually is. And as you can see here, it's just two big plants and a light colored box that happens to have green lighting. And this is where its flight path ends. It flew off. Good for him. All right, back to thinking. And here's another example where lighting can completely change the way a landscape looks. As you can see, it's supposed to be dark and moody and foggy, but if we remove all those elements, it's a completely different place. And we're gonna actually zoom this area out because it's way larger than I thought it was gonna be. And from up above, it almost looks like a maze. It's not quite, but it's amazing how many walls there are and how much land there is to cover for an area that is so densely fogged and darkened. This little tidbit is absolutely exciting. This was recommended to me while I was on stream, and apparently, every time Wheatley's on a little LED screen, he's actually out of bounds somewhere in a black box. Essentially, the character model has to be on the map, so he can essentially be digitally televised in this digital world known as Portal 2. And the actual Wheatley that is being used to broadcast is only a small portion of what he's actually supposed to look like. Ah, but if we hoof it, we can still catch a little cameo from Peabody, the portal bot essentially. Now in this scene, you can see Peabody off in the distance and then he locks eyes with you for one moment and runs off into the test chamber exit. But if we take the camera over there, we can see exactly where he goes when he runs off. And as it turns out, he pretty much just disappears the second that he's off screen. So we're now at the end of the game and this gets kind of interesting. If we are to go into third person and activate the stalemate button, uh, yeah, it, it, it gets creepy. Shell just becomes a pair of arms that are actually connected to each other, which is really interesting, but still creepy. Space! Wait a minute, space? Where would space be on this map? Well, actually, it's not that far at all. It's directly below the final boss fight. However, you can't reach planet Earth. And I would have never thought to check for it because the out of bounds in this map is especially glitchy. But because of what we learned at the very start of the episode where background elements can be blown up but served from a different part of the map, I took the time to find it. It was very important to me because there's a certain character that just loves space. And I just wouldn't feel right inside without giving him what he wanted. Go to space, Dad. Dad, I'm in space. I'm proud of you, son. Dad, are you space? Yes, now we are a family again. First, I want to say sorry. I know that I've been promising Kingdom Hearts 2. You might have paid attention last episode, and I guarantee you a lot of you are going to be asking where that episode is before ever reaching this part of the video. So. If you weren't one of those people, try to find them in the comment section and uh, let them know that this is the message for them. I'm sorry! Essentially, uh, I thought that we were ready to do the Kingdom Hearts 2 episode. Uh, it's not ready yet. It's, uh, it's We're on the right track, but we're not there yet. Why are you toying with my heartstrings, Derek? I, you're Kingdom Hearts. <sighs> That's even bigger than my regular heart. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, that was Portal 2! Portal 2, guys! Come on! It's you know, not Kingdom Hearts, though. Where's Kingdom Hearts? Uh, next week, we, there's gonna be no vote because next week is going to be the one-year anniversary of Boundary Break. Already? Already? I know. It just flew right by. Jeez. Louis. Oh, he's having a mental breakdown over there. Uh, <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> So I'm going to be doing something kind of special for that. Uh, I've already revealed what that is to some people, but for the rest of you, I'll let you wait and find out what that is going to be. With that said, I think we're all set. Um, you know, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter. I got all sorts of boundary break type stuff. 
that you don't get to see on the show. I keep it very interesting. I don't do any drama. No uh, drama. No, we're not going to name any other YouTubers who use Twitter for drama, but we don't do that here. <laughs> so consider. But um, but all right, guys, I'm going to take care. No, you take care. Don't worry about me. You take care. And I'll see you next week. All right. Bye.